I thought it would be a good idea to give you a example problem that is similar to one of the explorations that deals with buoyancy and Archimedes principles. So this is just like one of the examples on the exploration. Consider a block of wood that has a mass of 0.25 kilograms, which is 250 grams, and a volume of 425 centimeters cubed. The wood is held underwater in a submerged position beneath the water surface. Answer the following questions in this problem, assume that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. The first question asks, what is the weight of the block of wood? And we know that weight is equal to the mass of the object times gravity. And the mass of the block of wood is 0.25 kilograms. And we're assuming the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So the weight of the block of the wood is 2.5 newtons. So in my picture over here, I could draw a force, which is the weight, which is 2.5 newtons. The next question asks, what volume of water is displaced by the wood block when it is totally submerged? Now in this case, if you totally submerge the block of wood, whatever the volume of the block of wood is, that's how much water is actually going to be displaced. So the volume of the water in this case is just equal to the volume of the block because it is totally submerged. And so since the volume of the block is 425 centimeters cubed, that's the volume of the water. Okay, so part B. What is the mass of water displaced by the wood block when it is totally submerged? So we know how much water we have. It has a volume of 425 centimeters cubed. And the question is, how much mass is that equivalent to of the water? And we can use the definition of density and the fact that the um, the density of water is one gram per centimeter cubed. So if I write down the formula for density, we know that the density is equal to the mass per unit volume. And so for the water, the water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed. And that's equal to the mass of the water divided by the volume of the water. And we know the volume of the water is 425 centimeters cubed. So we need to solve for the mass of the water. And in this case, if we multiply both sides of the equation by 425 centimeters cubed, don't have a lot of room here, I'm sorry. then the 425 will cancel, and the centimeters here cubed will cancel here, and we have the mass of the water that is displaced is 425 grams. Okay, the next question says, what is the weight of the water that's displaced? Now we know that we can calculate the weight of anything if we know its mass, the weight is its mass times gravity. But in order to use this expression, we have to make sure that the mass is measured in units of kilograms. So if we take 425 grams and we divide by 1,000, that will give us the mass in kilograms. So 425, whoops, 25 grams. If I divide by 1,000, that gives me point four to five kilograms. So the weight of the water that is displaced is the mass, 0.425 kilograms, times gravity, which we're using as 10 meters per second squared. And so this gives me 4.25 newtons. Okay, so we now know the weight of the water that's displaced. So let's go to the next page and see what the next question asks. So the next question asks, how much buoyant force does the surrounding water exert on the block of wood when it is totally submerged? So we know, according to Archimedes' principle, that the buoyant force is exactly equal to the weight of the water displaced. So our buoyant force is just going to equal, 
4.25 newtons. So if I come over to my picture, I know that I have the weight of the object, that's the block, acting down, and that was 2.5 newtons. And now I have an upward lift from the water, the buoyant force, which is 4.25 newtons. So at this point, you could probably tell me how much force the hand must be pushing down. It's going to have to push down to equal out um, the forces that are acting on, on the block. So if there's 425 going up and 2.5 going down, there's going to have to be a push going down of 1.75 if I did that right in my head. If the block is now released, what will be the net force acting on the block? So once you release the block, your hand is no longer acting. So if I do exactly as we just talked about, we have the weight of the block acting down, which is 2.5 newtons. And once we release our hand, we just have this upward force of 4.25 newtons. And so the net force that's acting on the block is just the upward force, 4.25 newtons, minus the weight of the block acting down. So if I subtract these two, and of course I'm not going to do a very good job of this in my head, I think it's 1.75 newtons upward. Okay, finally, when the block eventually reaches equilibrium after being released and it's floating, the buoyant force on the block is now what? So now, if I just drew a picture of this, not a very good picture, so here's the water, and now here's my block, right here, and it's floating, so it's just sitting there. So if I draw the forces acting on the block now, the weight of the block is still acting, that's still 2.5. 5 newtons acting down and if it's floating it must be in equilibrium so there has to be a buoyant force acting up this way and the buoyant force is less than it was before because now there's less of the object that is submerged and if it's in equilibrium then we know that the sum of the forces the net force have to add up to zero and so the only way that can be the case is if the buoyant force equals the weight of the block, 2.5 newtons. So this gives you an idea of how um, the buoyant force works. And one of the important concepts here is that the buoyant force is always going to equal the weight of the water that's displaced. The more water you displace, the bigger the buoyant force is. So there was more buoyant force acting on the block when it was totally submerged and less when it actually got to the top.